So I'll go through the report card timeline. Uh, briefly go through the changes to the report cards for grades six and seven. I'll talk about the approaches to learning skills. Uh, Mike Moore is doing uh, approaches to learning specific open door next Thursday. So if you wanted really detailed information, that would be the open door you would want to attend. Talk a little bit about subjects and criteria and then the dates of all the report cards. So your progress report one, two, and the final three. And then just some grade boundaries and how, how to understand those. And then we'll break into a very mini activity. <laughs> so for the report card timeline, uh, the first progress report number one will be coming out on Friday, no November 4th. Uh, for grade eight and nine, their advisor teacher will be emailing you the rubric report. So you'll get a PDF uh, file of the rubric report. It is quite large, so I wouldn't suggest printing it. I would suggest just viewing it online. And then in PCR, you'll be able to see a transcript with their approaches to learning uh, skills. And that's on Friday, November 4th. In February, uh, February 17th, there will be progress number two that is available. Again, you'll get an email from your son or daughter's advisor teacher with the highlighted rubric for grade eight and nine. For grade seven, six and seven, you can access that anytime because it's the feedback folder. Uh, they will also receive a one to seven level on the February report and ATL grade again, as well as an advisor comment. And that will have everything within that report card on, in February. <laughs> Again, you can access PCR for a transcript that will show their level one to seven and their ATLs. And then the final report card comes out on Tuesday, July 4th, and that will just be through PCR. There won't be any email from the advisor teacher with the rubric report. So changes to the report card, just briefly, as I said, uh, live time feedback for grades six and seven. Every grade six and seven student and parent has been shared on the feedback folder for their child. These folders provide up-to-date feedback to the students about their assessments. So as soon as they hand in an assessment and they receive that back, the teacher is providing that feedback. They're looking at it. They're breaking it down um, for their strengths, um, areas for improvement, and they're really diving into that feedback so they can use that on their next assessments that they have. Uh, Mr. Jones at the Open Door Around Lifetime Feedback showed parents how to set notifications so that every time something is entered into their child's feedback folder, they can get a notification so they can also view it. Um, any of the teachers or Mr. Jones can help you set that if you're not sure, or I can show you as well. So the approaches to learning grades, um, as I said, the student's report card will contain an ATL grade for three specific learning skills. If you hear uh, the acronym ATL, it stands for Approaches to Learning. These gra grades will provide a profile of each student's development in their organization, collaboration, and self-improvement. Each, uh, each teacher will provide a judgment for your child. And students will also have frequent opportunities to self-assess their progress. So this is something we also want students involved in for their individual uh, profile on how they feel they're doing around organization, collaboration, and reflection. And those are the three key ones we look at as a whole middle school for them to develop and make sure that they're progressing with. These are the terms that you'll see. So on the report card, you'll actually only see um, a letter. So you might see an R, an E, a U, or an M. And they stand for requiring support, emerging, using, modeling. We don't see it as a negative if they have requiring support. We see that as something where it's great feedback for the student and the parents, and something where the teacher now can support and make sure that student's improving in. Everyone, just as it, the similar with in a core course, you're going to progress at your own speed, and we just need to support that learning process. And this is just some more detailed information about those three skills. So organization, managing time and tasks effectively. So teachers are going to look at, do they arrive at class on time? Do they have the appropriate materials? Are they meeting academic deadlines? Do they use their class time effectively? So those are some elements of organization that the teacher is looking at. Collaboration, can they work with others? Can they receive and give meaningful feedback? 
Um, can they encourage others to contribute if they have um, a group member that's maybe a little more quiet or passive within their responsibilities? Can they take responsibility for their own actions? So that's what we're looking at for collaboration. And then reflection skills, we're looking, can they consider personal learning strategies? Can they take action to achieve their personal goals? And can they show a willingness to try new approaches in their learning? You can also see how these three really tie nicely into us moving towards a model of lifetime feedback. Because the students are then actually doing that every time they get an assessment as well, because they're taking ownership over what they achieved, what they need to do to in improve that achievement next time. So this really ties in nicely with our new model of reporting. So progress report number one, which is the one that you'll receive November 4th, um, will look, this is what the rubric report will look like that gets emailed to you. So at the top, you'll see a curriculum focus. And this is just a brief focus that will tell you what the grade eight and nine students have been doing by the teacher. This is at individuals and societies, which is social studies or humanities. You, the three terms are thrown around a little bit. Um, you'll also see that the approaches to learning are here. So you can see R, requiring support, U is using. And you'll see an NA here for overall level of achievement because on this report card, they will not get a level one to seven. Teachers haven't had enough time to make a professional judgment for them on a one to seven. So that's the first area of that uh, report card that you'll see for grade eight and nines. Then below that, you'll see the actual rubric and the criteria. And you'll see hi uh, yellow highlighting. And this is really the, um, the part that informs you about your child's learning, is where they're highlighted is where they're falling within those uh, criteria on the rubric. And it also tells you what they might need to do to move higher up within it. So this is really important information to sit down and talk to your child about. And we're going to go through it in an activity that will give you some idea of how to have that discussion, what to pull out when you're having that discussion with your child. One thing I, I would, should point out is you may see that your child's getting a 3-4 for two of the objectives and then a 5-6 for the other two. And that just shows you that they're a little stronger in those areas. So, this says uses a research method to collect and record mostly relevant information, and they're a three, four. So that should inform you that their research skills are, are still needing some support and work, right? They haven't quite mastered what we're looking for. And a five, six formulates a clear and focused research question and explains it's relevant. So they can do that basic part of making sure they have that question to get started. But then when it goes to collect that information to answer the question, they still need some support, support there. So that's why you would see maybe a breakup within that criteria. Progress number two will be very similar. Um, the, you'll still see the curriculum focus. You'll sti still see your approaches to learning skills. And now you can see that you know, for this student, they've actually improved from progress one to progress two on their organization and reflection. And now you would see the overall level one to seven. So you can see that now they're at a level five, and that would be on the February report card. This would be a new focus, because they would be doing um, different stuff from the November to the February report. And now you're going to see green highlighting for that February report card. If you see yellow highlighting, we leave that there, because now you can see that actually from the first report card in November, they've actually digressed a little bit within that criteria because this would be the most relevant feedback that you're getting for your student in grade eight or nine. So this is really important that we leave the yellow highlighting so that you can see whether they've digressed or improved within that. So if you see no yellow highlighting down here, then you'll know that they've improved because they've moved up within those criteria. So if there wasn't highlighting before, it couldn't be assessed? Right, so for the, if we go back to the November one, it's a great question. And there's no highlighting in this. It's because teachers didn't have time to do an assessment with those criteria yet by in November. But they did do an assessment for these two criteria. But by February, teachers have the opportunity to make sure all uh, criteria are assessed for that report card. And then the final report card will just be in PCR, as I said. And it'll look like this as the transcript. And you can see progress one, two, 
Progress 3 is within that last from February to uh, the end of June, and it'll show you exactly the levels of criteria that they got. So for each criteria, and then their final level of achievement and the ATLs. So this again is for your ATL. So emerging, using, uh, sorry, requiring, uh, uh, requiring support, you, uh, merging, using, and modeling. And those are the assessments against your ATLs with sort of organization, collaboration, and reflection. Yeah. And LOA stands for level of achievement. So that would be their final level of achievement. And then the criteria A, B, C, and D would be listed here. And also in progress two and three, you will receive an advisor comment from your, uh, your child's advisor teacher. And this comment just basically gives you a holistic view of how your child's doing. So how they're doing within their um, commitments at school, their academics, um, organization, their goals. So it's a big picture from your advisor teacher of how your student's doing and providing some feedback on that. So again, I just like to show these. I've, I show these at every open door, and it's just a good reminder of how we actually get our level one to sevens. So t teachers, once they've assessed a student in all criteria, get a boundary guideline, and that's what this is. And then from that boundary guideline, they're able to have an overall IB grade level of one to seven. So this will also be sent home with the rubric reports. It's, on, it's one of the cover sheets. So you'll be able to access this once the report cards go home. It's just a nice reminder of, of what system we use. And also focusing on the words. I, I know numbers are important, but the words really tell you the most valuable information to help support your child's learning. Right, because a number is just a number. This is gonna tell you exactly what they're doing and where they need to go. And that's what the teachers really focus on too when they use the criteria. Okay, this is always a, an exciting slide because I don't actually share this very often. But it is the BC Ministry of Education letter grades comparison to what an IB one to seven level is. Um, so you can see that if the student's getting a level one, two, that would be an I. If they're getting a level five, six, that's considered an A. Now this is gonna change, obviously, because the BC Ministry of Education is bringing in a very similar education plan to um, the IB, where there won't be letter grades anymore. But I do show this once a year. It's my gift to parents, just to show you the, the kind of equivalent of what, how IB is really pushing our students way beyond what the ministry used to expect. So understanding the levels, this is a great way to break down understanding the one to seven levels uh, when you're talking. Now you'll see an eight here because this includes the levels within a criteria. So a, cr a student, when they're getting assessed with a criteria, can get a max to an, a level eight. When they go to an overall one to seven, then it changes a little bit, it shifts. But this is a great way, if they're at a one, two, it means they can just state the factual information. So they're at a very basic level of understanding. Three, four, they can describe it, so they can state it and add a few details to it. Five, six, they could sit down with someone and explain that information and help them understand it. A seven, eight, they can analyze and evaluate the information. So they're really then starting to make those big connections, transferring information into familiar and unfamiliar situations, um, and really thinking the big, big concepts here. So this is just an easier way sometimes to look at that criteria or even look at the one to seven, um, because it doesn't have, it has very simple terms, and it makes sense for the students and, and for you when you're sitting down with your child. Great, we're gonna break into an activity because report cards go home and then it's this big PDF highlighted rubric and it can get a little confusing. So I'm gonna put you in pairs just so that we can look at two different profiles of students. So maybe I'll just get you guys to pair up however you'd like. So at the 
you can see I've given you two different student profiles. Um, so I've given you a student Z and student X. And you can see that all criteria are highlighted for these students. Okay, and this is a social studies class again. So this would be something you would see on the February report card, right? Because all of the highlighting is there. Okay? And I've told you that um, they can get a, the student Z would get a total possible score of 30. And I'll put the grade boundaries back up on the screen in a second. And student X would get a total score of 13. Okay? And I've also provided you with the approaches to learning judgments. So you can see for student X, there's an ERE. -E, and for student Z, there's an EUM. And I've also provided that information about the approaches to learning for you. Oh, and I provided the grade boundaries for you. So helpful, so organized. So what I'm going to ask you to do for each of the student is if you turn to the last page, there's four questions. And I'm not going to help you initially. I'm just going to ask you to discuss as a group, what does the approaches to learning grade tell you about this student? So all I want you to look at is the approaches to learning grades. What does it tell you about this student? How do you think this feedback might impact their learning? What would the support look like at home? So how would you support your child at home around the approaches to learning? And what might that look like at school? Two, what strength can you highlight about your student? So now looking at the overall report card, including the highlighted rubric, what strength can you highlight about your student? Why do you think these are strengths for your student? What area for improvement are, are needed? What areas of improvement are needed for your student? How can you support your student to improve from reading the descriptors? So now going back and reading what's highlighted, how do you think you can support your student? And as a parent, what should you focus on when having a conversation about report cards? So you can just write at the back. You can even rip this off the back so you have it in front of you. Feel free. And as a group, you can either do both students all together or you can split into two groups, whatever you'd like, if you can just go through those questions using the report card. And as I said, I'm not going to initially help you because I just want to see what you can pull from each other and in that understanding, and then I'll come back and help. So what, what would you see in a student's profile who's getting the higher bands on a rubric by getting an, an E for organization? What kind of characteristics might you see from that student? Clever, but maybe lazy to, to pack their bags and... Okay, so clever, yeah. Maybe might procrastinate. Yeah. yeah. You might see signs of anxiety or stress. So they're, they're capable of achieving high levels, but in order to do it in a way where they're balanced and being able to maintain a nice lifestyle in the sense of being involved in other things, you might not be able to see that in them because they might be students who actually can achieve high levels, but it's that last minute, then they're in a panic. So you see these anxiety levels go up, the stress go up, they're scrambling to make sure they have everything together, and then they're submitting it. So as teachers, we see this a lot. We see students who are very capable academically, but the level of how they handle that isn't necessarily in an organized manner. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that's where you might see that profile come up um, if your child's like that, where you see emerging for organization. Right? So they might be able to do well on the summative tasks, mm -hmm. so tests, big projects, but it, the ability to actually get to that point, you might see stress and anxiety and last minute and staying up till 2 in the morning. All those are usually signs around that they haven't actually been able to start using those organization skills or even model them. So they're emerging to how, how do I handle this? And you know, a change this year that you've probably heard a lot from in English and humanities is students building their own action plans on how that should roll out for the year around homework and big assignments. And that's to teach them how do you actually chunk out assignments? How do you put that into your schedule when you, ha you play on three different teams or you take piano three times a week? So really working with them to now see their overall profile as a human being and how a student in the academic setting fits into that. So, and it's because we've seen this from a lot of our students. You know, we, all our students want to be high achieving students, but not all of them have that organization skill down to actually support that. So with the live assessment, is mm -hmm. it connecting to these criteria? Yeah, so, so with the live assessment, you, you will see that teachers have either provided their own feedback or provided a link to the assignment. And on that assignment, you would see 
uh, you wouldn't see probably all four criteria, although it happens sometimes in social studies, but you might see two of the criteria linked, and then there would be highlighting plus written feedback, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then what we're having students do is break that feedback down so they understand what the teacher is saying, because we were noticing too that teachers were giving feedback, they'd go through it, but then we weren't really sure if students understood what the teacher was providing to them. So now the students actually have to break it down and look at what are their areas of improvement, what are their strengths. Basically, they're building their own action plan on how they're going to use that feedback to use it in the next assessment. Um, and that's what's so valuable in those feedback folders. And it, it's directed at the students. You know, so as Martin said that, you know, the teacher's giving feedback so the students understand it. And, and that's, that's what the most important part, is that the students understand that feedback so they can learn from it. But then parents can also access it and have that conversation at home. And this is the same conversation you would have, right? So you're going to still see this terminology from the rubrics that they get. And I'd still encourage you to focus on the words, even though it can be a bit confusing. Just focusing on the numbers isn't going to help them necessarily improve or help you know how to help them. So if we looked at, I heard conversation around this, and th it's thinking critically is the criteria, right? So that's criteria D for individuals and in, in societies. So if we just think about thinking critically, we know we're going to be looking at them to make connections, think beyond just the facts, right? So if we look at student X and we see that they're hitting in the first band there, and it says, um, identifies the main points of ideas, events, and uh, visual representation, okay, or arguments to a limited uh, extent. So we know that they can pull out some things and use it, but they really aren't able to do it probably without a little bit of support. Um, identifies the ori origin and purpose of limited sources and data. So right there, I know that, yeah, they can pull and find some resources to use when they're trying to piece things together, but they wouldn't be able to tell me where, where it's from, who produced it, why it would be a valuable source. So everything's that kind of what we would call just that, you know, requiring support beginning level, right? So, and, and you know, for the November report, if I saw this, I would, my, and I had a child, I would, I would want to talk to them about that and set some goals. But I wouldn't be over pan overly panicked yet because it is the only the first few months, and this is the this is the chance to say, okay, what do we really need to focus on within your learning, right? So as a parent, yes, we never want to see that level one two band because it's 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 scary because we're like ah. But if we step back and think, this is a great time for me to see this, right? It's November. It's the beginning of November. We've only been in school two months. This is great. Right? And if they were consistently hitting level one, two, you would probably know even before this report came out in November. So this is, this is the great time to then have that discussion and say, OK, well, obviously, we can see criterion B and D are quite difficult for you in individuals and societies. So what's our action plan? How can I support you to make sure that we can increase that? You know, And it's not all on you. It might be, well, let's talk to Mr. Cuspert about setting up some extra help sessions. Or after you get back a, an assessment task, I want you to make sure that you're setting up a five-minute meeting with Mr. Cuspert at lunch to just go through it so that you really understand. Right? So in grade seven, they're doing that, and that's great. And in grade eight and nine, they are doing it to an extent. But again, the students who don't have that full benefit of working through it quite yet. So they're working through it as a class or, or individually, but setting up that extra meeting if they're hitting here is just so valuable. And all our teachers are open to that. So that would be the conversation I would be having with my child, is what does that action plan look like to make sure that we can increase those bands? Right? And then for our organization, you could see both of these students, as we said, were getting an E, right? So then I would, I would be looking at, well, maybe we need a checklist that you check off in the morning to make sure that you have everything ready, right? Or maybe the evening before, right? So the evening before, I want you to just show me your completed homework. I'm not checking it to see if it's right or wrong, just that it's completed, that's in your bag, you're packed, ready to go, we'll check it off. So just having a little support there. Collaboration. Um, I heard Elizabeth said that would be a hard one for a parent. I agree with that. But I think you know your child's personality. 
right? And the hardest thing with collaboration sometimes, and I can attest to this, is a type A personality who just wants to take charge and just do it because they just want to get it done, <laughs> right? So, you know, if you know your child has a personality like that, then the conversation might be, well, how could you adapt to make sure that everyone has a chance to do something within that group or a voice? You know, and if your child has a different personality where maybe they're a bit passive and they just kind of ride it out and hope, wait to see what happens, then you could encourage them to maybe step up and take a bit of a leadership role or, you know, take one component of it so that they don't feel overwhelmed, but they're still taking part in what that looks like. So those kind of small conversations can happen within the collaboration. And reflection is hard. Reflection is something that we'll always work with our students on. Um, I think even as adults, it's hard to sit down and think and reflect back and, mm -hmm. and move forward from that. So we'll always be working on that. They work on an advising life skills and their core academics. So it is a process. So if they had emerging here for uh, reflection, I wouldn't be too concerned. I would just start maybe having those conversations. Oh, I noticed you got back you know, your math test. Can you tell me what was really hard on it? Can you tell me what you found easy? Oh, what did you learn from those hard questions? Right there, they're doing a verbal reflection with you. So they're starting to work through that process of what does reflection look like? How can you use it to benefit your learning? And they don't even know that's what you're doing because don't use the word reflection. <laughs> so those are just some techniques. And I just like, I like to do this activity because it, when report cards come home, it can be kind of overwhelming when you start getting, you know, 90 pages of a PDF rubric report and, and what does that look like and how do I talk to my child about it. So just breaking it down a little bit in this activity gives you a few questions and a few prompts that you can use to make sure that you're supporting your child in their learning and, and also having that conversation about their report card. And the only other change I should mention is uh, electives and life skills will not be on the rubric report anymore because it was just such a huge document. Yeah. So that will only be in the PCR because they only get um, approaches to learning levels for those. So um, you'll just have your core courses within the PDF report for eight and nine now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So every course I have this report card. Yes, for grades eight and nine. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll get an email. It's a big, yeah, it's a big document. That's why I suggest not printing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can if you want, but uh, it's a big document. But then the PCR report will have the transcript aspect of it. Yeah, we're not. There, it's it's not very often that teachers are way off from each other. So, yeah. And then the, oh, there's no signal, but just a reminder that of the uh, middle school MYP handbook that's also on the website, and that has. All, tons of information about the MYP program and more details about the criteria. So if you wanted any more details, that is obvi obviously a great resource. And you can also just drop by my office anytime if you had a question as well. That middle school resource page is really important. Yeah, yeah. So it has everything. It has access to the handbook, it has access to help sessions, and it has access to the assessment calendar. Yeah, it's a great resource. Is it that regular? Yeah. <laughs> as well as the slides and other things. Yes. And yeah. The presentations. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for taking the time to come. Thank you. Thank you.